Hi there Camaro owners. Today in your 2013 Chevrolet Camaro we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Draw Tights Class 1 1 and a quarter inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. The cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper so you're only going to see the receiver here at the back. It's a class one, one and a quarter by one and a quarter receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your light duty applications. You'll be able to put a two bike platform rack in it, and you could also do some very light towing with it as well. It uses a half inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer.com. And you can also get locking versions to protect your accessories. On bottom, we have hoop style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should work with just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. This hitch features a 200 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. So it's gonna be more than enough for a two bike platform rack with a couple of bikes on it. You could also use a cargo carrier with it, but I do recommend that you don't load those all the way up. Most of the cargo carriers are gonna have a larger capacity than what this hitch is gonna be able to handle. It also has a 2000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that you can pull behind it. And that's gonna be enough if you wanted to do some light duty towing. You got maybe you got a small utility trailer that you wanna just move some stuff around. Maybe you're moving to a new place or just helping somebody out. Or maybe you've got a jet ski trailer and you wanna take those to the lake with you. You should be able to do that with this little hitch here. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on your accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it's gonna be about nine inches. And this is important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, it measures about nine and three quarter inches. And this is important when determining if you need to drop a rise or a raise shank on any of your accessories. And since this guy does sit so low, I highly recommend a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. It's extremely easy, so you could easily do this at home. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle. Now we're working on a lift here. If you're doing this at home, I would recommend that you probably want to lift it up or drive it onto some ramps to give yourself some extra room. You can do it without doing that, but it's gonna be really tight to get the hitch underneath here and lift it into position due to the low clearance of your Camaro. So I highly recommend getting it up. Then we're gonna come underneath and we're gonna lift it into position. So we're gonna take one side of our hitch, we're gonna go up above the exhaust and then we can pivot our hitch up over the exhaust on the other side. And then the holes in our hitch are gonna rest right on top of the stud sticking out. So you can see it's sitting on top of the weld nut, not just the stud. That's what we want. We are then gonna place a washer over it. These are the smaller washers that come in your kit. And then we're gonna loosely thread on the locking nut. We're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. Now we're gonna come here to the center and forwardmost part of our hitch. This is going to have a gap right here between your differential right here where it's mounted and the hitch. The gap that you're gonna have there is gonna vary just based on manufacturer variances. So to compensate for this, you do get three different length bolts that come in your kit. So you can pick the most appropriate length because we, the bolt's gonna slide straight through from our hitch side in here and we don't want our bolt to come into contact with the pivoting part right here. We also needed to take up the gap between the hitch and our differential mount there. And we've got a bunch of these larger washers. You'll get several of them. You'll just want to take as many as is necessary to take up that gap. So after grabbing some washers, six washers was the correct amount for our particular one here. So we're also gonna take the bolt. After holding it up there, it looks like the shortest bolt's gonna work the best for our one, our application here. We're gonna slide the conical tooth washer on it with the teeth facing away from the head of the bolt. And now we're gonna lift those washers into position here, lining up with the holes in the hitch as well as the holes in the differential. We'll take our bolt, slide it through and then on the opposite side, we're gonna thread on the lock nut. And for getting this on, you might have to pull the bolt out slightly, get your nut up in there, and then twist the bolt to start it into the nut. Now, if you're still having clearance issues here to where the bolt is too long, you can add some of these larger extra washers that you got in your kit behind the head of the bolt between the head and the conical tooth washer. The conical tooth must be against the hitch. 
Now we can go back and tighten down our bolts. We're gonna start with the ones at the furthest rear that we put on first. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to snug those down. And then we can come back and tighten down the bolt towards the front that we put in with a 15 millimeter socket and wrench. We can then go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. And then we can come back and torque our last bolt. This one can be a little tricky to torque just due to the angles. But just take your time, readjust the head to make sure that the socket's on there each time you go back to make sure you don't round it off or anything. And if we look straight up here, we can see we've got a gap between our differential and the bolt we just installed. The threads are just barely sticking through the nut, and that's what you're looking for, is for it to be either flush there or just barely sticking through like we got here. If there's more than that sticking through, then you'll want to have to readjust, either going to a shorter bolt that comes in your kit or adding those washers behind the head like we talked about. With everything torqued down, that completes our installation, so we're ready to load up our favorite accessories and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Drawtight's Class 1 1 1⁄4 inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2013 Chevrolet Camaro.